Okay, let's get going. Another episode of Wings Up Weekly, Tennessee Tech Athletics' new video podcast. Weather's getting nicer. Summer's around the corner. That means some more golf. So what a better guest to have than Tennessee Tech head men's and head women's coach, Hulk Brown. Coach, great to see you. How are you? I'm doing good, Dylan. Thanks for having me. Uh, you're right. The weather's finally changing, getting some warm weather. Uh, time to get out there and play some golf. So you just came on beforehand, and we went over going on this episode. You were joined by a special guest, your dog, Knox. Where did Knox go? <laughs> uh, he's actually uh, sitting down underneath the table next to my feet. I can feel him up against my feet right now. So uh, hold on. Knox, come here. Oh, this is great. Let's see if I can get him up here. Come here, buddy. <laughs> Come here. Uh, he's just looking at me. That's all right. <laughs> Maybe a little bit later in the episode, yeah. we can get Knox involved. Love it. Love it. So for those following along here on Wings Up Weekly, one of the very first things that we like to do is hear from that coach or whoever it is, administrator we're speaking to on how their team is doing. Of course, with you, very interesting because you are the head coach of two different Tennessee Tech programs, both the men's and women's golf teams. So, Coach, what can you tell us about how the members of both teams are doing? Uh, from what I can tell, they're doing very well. Uh, we actually did uh, a meeting with them last week uh, as a group. We'll do another meeting with them next week before the end of the month. And um, I try to reach out to each one of them at least once a week to check in. And uh, by all accounts, everybody seems to do, be doing pretty well, uh, trying to find ways to stay busy. I know a lot of them are playing golf. Uh, a lot of them are just kind of enjoying a little bit of downtime, to be honest. I mean, we've kind of been away from each other for over two months now. So um, it's just crazy. But uh, I think everybody's doing pretty well from what they've been telling us. Yeah, and that's something that's, that's always intrigued me and in preparing for this episode, just the fact that you're the head coach of two different programs and all that must go into that. And then even from a logistical standpoint, when sometimes you might have one team playing in one location and another team on the same weekend, let's say, playing in another, you've been doing this for about a decade now. Describe kind of what it is like to be the head coach and some of the logistics behind being the head coach of two different programs. Oh, it's been a lot of fun when you when you said decade. That just kind of made me smile because uh, going into my tenth year, I uh, cannot believe it. To be honest, uh, it's just crazy how how fast the time flies. Uh, but it's it's a lot of planning. Uh, there is a lot of logistical stuff that goes into it. You know, myself, and my assistant, uh, Coach Smith. You know, we we do a lot of planning as far as like who's going to go to what tournament if they are both traveling at the same time. And uh, it's just um, – I enjoy that part of it, though, and planning everything out and kind of seeing how everything um, ends up turning out. Uh, also, just a disclaimer, um, <laughs> my dog is sitting next to the, the door right now, and he's growling. It means he has to go to the bathroom, but he's just going to have to wait. And if you hear him barking, we have some people here cleaning out the gutter. So uh, just a heads up if you hear some stuff going on in the background. <laughs> I love it. The dog Knox doing his thing on Wings Up <laughs> yeah. Weekly. That's great. That's great. And again, if we see Knox a little bit later in the episode, that's a win for everybody. So we'll that's right. With that. that's um, right. So, of course, with the two different teams, when all of these changes began to occur in relation to COVID-19, both of your teams were getting ready for a very important event because it was the host event for Tennessee Tech Golf the Bobby Nichols Intercollegiate over in Sevierville. If you go back a few months ago, right when the changes occurred, like I said, that was the event upcoming. What do you remember most about that time two months ago, especially in regards to that host tournament? Well, I remember uh, we had just gotten back from uh, Myrtle Beach with the guys, and uh, Amanda and I were just getting all of our ducks in a row to get ready to leave for Sevierville on Friday. I think it was the 13th. We were going to leave on Friday the 13th. And um, Tuesday, as Tuesday came along, Wednesday, I uh, started getting some emails from some teams saying that, um, you know, their administrators are not going to let them travel because of all this. Of course, you know, you'd heard some things going on that, you know, um, some bad things are happening. But I was kind of hopeful that, like, okay, we'll figure out what to make it work because wasn't sure how serious it was then but then by the time uh Thursday rolled around like we I think we had 15 teams and each for men and women they were dropping like flies and I couldn't I couldn't update my information fast enough on my computer assuming we were going to travel and then finally you know we, we it just really kind of snowballed 
I remember, um, I think it was that Thursday, the day before we were supposed to leave, you know, people were in and out practicing a little bit, uh, wondering what was going to happen. And then uh, Mark reached out to us for, a, you know, an emergency meeting. And then that's when we found out what was going to be going down. And then we got all the players at the golf course and just kind of told them the, the bad news. And fast forward two months later and, you know, I mean, things are kind of, I guess, phasing back to the way they were, but it's going to be a while, it looks like. Yeah, well, what was that meeting like telling your your players and, and for both teams, both the men's and women's program, what was that meeting like having to tell them, hey, this tournament is canceled? Did you tell them, did you maybe know at that time that the rest of the season would be canceled? Didn't know the rest of the season was, would be canceled. Um, I figured that – I think we'd already gotten an email or two from some terms that we were supposed to play in that had been canceled. But I was, since it was middle of March, I was hopeful. I was like, well, maybe we can play. We, the guys and girls both have a tournament in April plus conference. So two events in April. Uh, I was hopeful that, okay, well, March we may not be able to do, but maybe we can do something for April or at the very least have our conference championship. Uh, that didn't, obviously that didn't turn out to happen. But, you know, talking to them, um, I mean, People were like, really? This is happening? Seriously? Like, some were mad, some were sad, some were disappointed. I mean, it was just – and it was tough. And we've got two uh, international girls on our team, uh, Katrina and Elizabeth. Uh, you know, I think they were pretty concerned, too. You know, because, I mean, they're a world away from where they grew up. You know, so it was just a, a lot more questions than answers. And, I mean, now there's still a lot more questions than answers, too. So, it was tough. It was tough. Yeah, and, and so obviously the sports stopped, the competitions, the tournaments, academics progressed on. A couple episodes ago, we had Dr. Levita Dexter on to talk about the academic side of the equation. That's always at the forefront of any Tennessee Tech program. And both of your teams finished strong this semester, so much so that last week you earned the, AP, the NCAA APR award for your both of your teams finishing in the top 10 percent nationally in the multi-year academic progress rate that is a huge award and what is awesome is that both of your teams captured it coach congratulations that's something that must mean a lot to you in your programs uh thank you um very excited about that um you mean student is before athlete. So, I mean, you know, they're here first and foremost to get a degree and to get an education. And it just goes to show you how um, how strong our student athletes are, not just our team, but in general. But talking about specifically the golf golf teams, uh, they really put a lot of emphasis on their schoolwork. And, and we try to drive home that that's the first thing on the list that you've got to knock out, before, you know, before anything else. And uh, they just did a great job. And I couldn't be more pleased with their performance. But what's great about that, too, is it's not just a one-and-done thing. This is the fourth straight year that the men's program has won it, the second straight year that the women's program has won it. I know a lot of people around Tennessee Tech Athletics are proud of that fact. How does that make you feel that this is a consistent thing in establishing this award, this commitment to academic excellence? Uh, it's, it means a lot for our program. Uh, it, it, it really drives home like what our culture is all about as far as, you know, go to class, do the work, uh, and, you know, take it seriously and do everything you can to um, graduate with a degree from Tennessee Tech. I mean, we certainly want to do well in golf and be highly successful in golf, but, uh, you know, I want them to play well and shoot good scores, shoot low scores, but I'm, I'm more excited really with the school and how well they're doing and academics than anything else. It's, it's, it's just a really cool honor to get. And, and um, I'm really proud of the, the guys and the girls. So you did bring up golf and, and a little bit early on in our conversation in this episode, you, you brought up how some of your players have been able to continue to play golf. To me, that's something in, in a difference between other sports. One, golf course is staying open throughout this time. Golden Eagle Golf Club, for example, and a number of other courses. You look at the nature of the sport itself versus other sports that require maybe more people to play, larger gatherings, things like that. Have your players been able to continue to play the sport of golf because they have had a way to make that happen? 
Um, from what I understand, I haven't talked to them. It, it seems like every one of them are, they are all finding ways to get out and practice. Uh, it's, you know, right now it's, it's difficult. I'd say, you know, in the next couple of months during the summer, they'll find some tournaments to play in. Um, but at this point, since everything stopped, I think all of them have made a concerted effort to find time to practice and get out on the golf course. But, you know, with us, with our sport's a little bit different. You're not in a, in a you know, confined space. Uh, you know, the social distancing aspect of it, I think, I mean, yes, it applies to golf. I mean, it applies to everything. But I think it lends itself a little bit easier to uh, our sport uh, as opposed to maybe some other sports out there. So it's been – I think we've, we've been able to make do with the tough situation uh, given the sport that we play. And, of course, the no tournaments and competition. How important, though, has it been that the fact that your players can still play this game, obviously from a skill standpoint, and that'll, I'm sure, have an impact as you look toward the fall if they're able to continue to play throughout the summer, but just kind of from a mental, maybe even emotional standpoint to, to try to keep things a little bit normal for these student athletes to continue, at least in some aspect, to play the sport that they love throughout this time? I just think that um, it's, it's very important that uh, they're able to still play. You know, we're, we're going with the mindset that uh, all systems go come August, unless we're told otherwise, which I would imagine here in the next six to eight weeks, we're gonna have a better, clear picture of what we're gonna be doing. Uh, but the times we've met with them as a team on Zoom, like what you and I are doing now, we've really kind of driven home with that. Like, look, you know, you, you still need to be doing everything you can to prepare and take advantage of this time where, you know, you can really work on what you wanna work on and uh, to get ready for August. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, if, if things go back to normal, they're expected to be ready to work right away because we start traveling a couple weeks after school starts if everything gets back to normal. What about you? <laughs> I mean, I know that we have the Pepsi Bobby Nichols Golden Eagle Scramble presented by Nicola Ultra. That's coming up June 12th to 14th right here in Cookville. Have you personally been sharpen up, sharpening up your skills for that? Um, <laughs> not as much as I should be. <laughs> <laughs> I've played a little bit, practiced a little bit, but um, yeah, I mean, I'll definitely be getting out there in the next couple of weeks to practice. It's just, I I love to play. Um, me practicing, I'd rather just go play than practice. So um, my dog's about to lose his mind. <laughs> He's sitting over here. But anyway, um, I've been playing some, but uh, I'm going to be getting out there more in the next couple of weeks. So uh, we'll see what happens here come middle of June. It'll be fun. Absolutely. And, and of course, while we're on the subject of that, give everybody out there a reminder that registration is still open, that spots are still available. You can visit ttsports.com. The best way to still register through the athletics ticket office, that phone number is 931-372-3940. Again, 931-372-3940. Three nine four zero, Coach, this has always been such a marquee Tennessee Tech Athletics fundraising event. It's always been a great event. One that I know you've won at least once. Has it been more than once? Just once. Okay, okay. And you always have a great time playing it. I know that. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it is a great time. I mean, I think uh, the whole athletic department does a great job of putting this together. And, you know, to benefit all the sports teams that we have here at Tech, it's just a, it's a huge deal. And I mean, I guess in some ways, like with everything going on in the world, it's it's a good way for people to get away from from this and, and get out there on the golf course, have a good time, be out in the open and just enjoy some fellowship and some golf. So while we're on the subject of you playing golf, let's take a look back. Of course, you are a Tennessee Tech athletics, a Tennessee Tech golfer back in the day collegiately. We spoke last week on the episode of Wings Up Weekly with Tennessee Tech head baseball coach Steve Smith, and he discussed how great it was to play, obviously, at Baylor and then coach at his alma mater when he was the head coach at Baylor. You're in that same boat, playing at Tennessee Tech, now the head coach at Tennessee Tech. I got to imagine that that's, that's pretty special for you and pretty important. Uh, very special. Um, I would have never guessed in a thousand years that I'd be doing this. Uh, for a living after I got done playing. It's hard to believe that it's been, you know, 14 years since I last teed it up in Paducah at the OVC Championship. But um, it's just been an honor. I mean, I, I wish Coach Nichols was still here. Honestly, he'd probably still be the coach if he was. Uh, I'd love to be able to talk to him. But just to be able to give back to a place that's given so much to me, there's no way I could ever um, thank our administration enough to give me this chance. And I just love it. It's awesome.
Huge fan that, that you brought up that 2006 in Paducah OVC Championships because you finished fifth overall in that event. You won all tournament honors. From a team perspective, Tennessee Tech and Eastern Kentucky, they tied for first in that OVC Championship. Eastern Kentucky did win the playoff, and that's actually the last time that a playoff has been needed for the OVC Men's Golf Championships. I'd love to hear what you remember most about that tournament. Obviously, it's significance, maybe something personal about you playing in it. But, yeah, what, what comes to mind for you? I could tell you just about every shot I hit that day. <laughs> um, oh, gosh. Um, where do I even begin? I mean, obviously, the playoff was um, – it was an awesome experience. I mean, it obviously, it was bittersweet with every, how everything turned out. Uh, it, it was a tough. It was tough to to lose that way, but um, just to be, just to have a chance. And I remember, I remember through um, eight holes, I was four under par, way out of my comfort zone that last day. And then after twelve holes, I was one over par. So I was kind of uh, taking the gas, so to speak. But then got on thirteen t, and I was like, "Look, you got a decision to make. You can." You can um, kind of just whittle away and, you know, shoot 76, 77, or you can dig deep and kind of salvage something out of this and uh, turn around and end up shooting even par that day, uh, coming fifth place in the tournament. But really, you know, I remember talking to the team before we went to the first tee uh, against EKU, and um, I got to play the playoff hole with Scott Stallings, who, you know, was on tours one three times. Um, play that last hole with him. Um, and three of the guys from EKU, it was what a what an at, what a uh, atmosphere that was. Nerve wracking situation. If I could go back and do it again, I would. I don't know <laughs> doing it at 37. I don't know if I'd have done it as well as back then. Um, but it was tough. It was a, it was a, it stung. And uh, you know, I, I really uh, hope that our teams can can have that opportunity. I mean, certainly we we would like to win it outright and go into the playoff, but. Hey, I'd take being in the playoff tomorrow to have a chance to win the conference championship every single day. So um, it was it was great. I mean, I, I think about it every once in a while, and um, I, I loved it. It was awesome. Yeah, that's that is really awesome. And you did bring up Scott Stallings, a name. Uh, so, so there's Knox going, a yeah. name so synonymous with, with TTU golf uh, on the PGA Tour, you mentioned, ha has won some, some tournament championships. A teammate of his, in 2006, he was an All-American. In 06 and 07, he was the OVC Golfer of the Year. He's in TG Sports Hall of Fame. I know the two of you are very close. Do you have maybe a story or a tournament or a shot or anything that might come to mind when you two are teammates that you like to share? Uh, well... Let's see. There's a lot of good things, but I remember uh, one day we were out – two things. One day we were out playing at Ironwood, uh, where we played most of the time when we were on the team. And um, eight is a par five, nine is a par five, and ten is a par four. And he went eagle, eagle, eagle on three straight holes. Uh, and then I eagled number 11, so or number 12. So so four out of five holes we made an eagle. That was a pretty cool. But to watch him make three straight eagles, I was like, mm, that's decent. <laughs> and then, um, you know, one thing I like to tell, talk about, Scott, as far as like, you know, his first three semesters, um, he had no all tournaments, no wins. And then his last five, he had 19 all tournaments and seven wins. So, like, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And like, the fact that he's on tour, this, he's getting ready to go into his. I think almost tenth year on tour, ninth or tenth year on tour, and to be able to keep his card and come to a place uh, like a small place like Tennessee Tech and have that kind of success, it doesn't matter uh, where you go if you want it bad enough, you're going to figure out a way to make it work. And that's what he did. He had a great attitude. Uh, he was a great leader, and uh, I mean, he did it the right way. He made sacrifices to be the best he could be, and I think that's one thing that a lot of young men and women got to understand is like if you're going to be elite while you're here and play at a high level then you've got to be willing to make sacrifices because if you don't, you're just going to be average. Being average is easy. All right, that's great stuff. And to hear you talk about Scott Stallings, his name is so associated with Tennessee Tech Golf, but the name for Tennessee Tech Golf, and you brought him up earlier, the Hall of Fame head coach, Bobby Nichols, his name everywhere with the Golden Eagles. 
the tournament next month in June has his name. We spoke earlier of the Bobby Nichols Intercollegiate in Sevierville. He was your head coach. What was it like to first to play for Coach Nichols? And then what does it mean to you to have the role now that he held for so long, being the head coach of both programs at Tennessee Tech? Well, I'll start with this, the last part first. I mean, you can never replace coach. Um, those, you know, people say, well, you got big shoes to fill. Uh, I mean, they can't be filled. You know, the best, the best that I can do is try to um, continue, uh, you know, his legacy uh, moving forward. Uh, he was just a good man. He was a good person. And uh, he treated people the right way. I mean, you, you can control how you treat people. And, you know, I think that, you know, he tried to see the good in everybody. And that's what I try to do is, is see the good in people. And, I mean, he was just such a, a nice guy. I mean, he probably – he should have been uh, meaner to us probably sometimes than he was. Uh, but, I mean, that just speaks to the heart of Bobby Nichols, just a giving person, a loving person, always wanting the best for, for his student athletes. And, and uh, that's what I try to be every day with them. And uh, just to be coaching the same place that he did, um, it's an honor. And as far as, like, playing for him goes, I mean – He's the only guy that gave me a chance. I mean, I, it was the only scholarship offer I had. He took a chance on me. You know, I can only hope that um, I did everything that he wanted and, and more, you know, while I was here. But um, he he took good care of me. He was always a positive influence, just a, a, a joy to be around. And uh, I miss him. He's um, just one heck of a guy. And, we, we, you know, Amanda and I end up uh, Elaine Garrison, who works at the at Golden Eagle Golf Club right now, we were just talking about him today, a couple stories about him. And, um, you know, he's the type of person that'll never be forgotten. He's a legend. He's a true uh, definition of a legend in my mind. That's great stuff. And, and him being the head coach for so long, you've been the head coach now since 2011 with no sports currently really going on. Everyone's been kind of looking back and, and watching famous historical games or maybe golf tournaments. When you look back as the head coach at Tennessee Tech, the men's and women's coach, what is a tournament, maybe a, a couple tournaments or, or some event that might stick out to you so far throughout your coaching tenure? Hmm. Well, it would be easy to say um, the times where we won. Uh, winning uh, for the guys, I would say uh, winning at Tennessee State's tournament back in, I want to say, April of 15, uh, we were – I think seven or eight shots back on the last day and we won by 11. We shot 269 as a team, 19 under par. I mean, I certainly think that uh, that's, that's a record that can be broken someday. But, man, that was amazing. Mitch, shot, Mitch Thomas shot 64. Lee Whitehead shot 66. Mason Griffin shot 69. Bryce Kendrick, 71. We dropped, we dropped a 73. I mean, incredible. And then that same year to have a chance to win conference going to the last day, um, Coming tie for second, that was awesome. And the girls, um, I would think, I mean, certainly winning the inaugural Bobby Nichols Intercollegiate was really, really cool. Uh, that was, um, I think, March of 2013. To do that was just really, really, really cool. I mean, uh, I think Coach was certainly looking down on us that day. And then I want to say in the spring of 2016 to come in second place at conference to have a chance to win that tournament. Uh, it's been it's been great. I mean, the, both teams I think have grown quite a bit. The program's grown quite a bit, and in the almost you know nine years I've been here, I certainly think there's more success coming up in the future. I'm excited to see what happens next. All right, coach, we're heading toward the finish line here on Wings Up Weekly. Not a lot of games for Tennessee Tech athletics. No games really over the last few months. Tournaments, competition. We we've discussed that a few times. So one of the larger pieces of content to come out the last few months were the Golden Wings Awards. Mm -hmm. I was on that committee. I was fortunate enough to help with the voting process. And I got to say, I think we may have missed the boat on a certain category. And that was performance of the year. No disrespect to the Tennessee Tech quarterback, Bailey Fisher, who put up video game-like numbers in the, in the contest against Samford. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking at a certain performance from a men's basketball game, halftime, against <laughs> late yeah. in January. I think you know exactly where I'm going for this. One of the yeah. most awesome marriage proposals of all time. It could have won for four <laughs> this year. Coach, how did you get – take us through the idea and then take us through how you came up with that great idea. 
Oh, gosh. Well, let me just first say that Katie is so far out of her league that she doesn't even know, okay? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm, she's, she's way, way out of my league. Don't deserve her, but that's for another day. Um, you know, thought about it, um, got the ring in the middle of December, and so I basically had a month to figure it out. I always had thought about, like, okay, I do want to do it on the basketball court. I know people have done that like that in that, like basketball field, basketball court, whatever. Um, so maybe that's not real original. Um, but I always just – I like I like the big crowds. I mean, now, granted, um, I, you know, with Belmont, I was like, man, there's going to be a lot of folks there. But I, I can't remember what was going on. There was something going on. Um, I wanted to do it in front of a lot of people uh, just because – I wanted to share it with my teams. I wanted her family to be there. I wanted my family to be there. It was really important for me to do that. Um, man, she was giving it to me pretty hard there for a couple months. And so when I had it all planned together and she's still giving me grief about it, I'm like, Katie, look, I can't I can't say anything to you. I can't say anything else to you. I mean, I can't give it away. And I think that day, I um, mean, you know, I'll disguise it as like, you know, myself and Steve and Kenny and our better halves, so we're going to go out there and answer some questions. and. You know, kudos to Dexter and, and Allison and all the crew that kind of put that together. Jordan that did the video graphic and all that stuff. Um, I was really wasn't that nervous until I got down under the tunnel and I started thinking about, okay, this is actually getting ready to happen. But once we got on the court, man, when that mic was in my hand, it was money. Open <laughs> <laughs> the crowd up? Like, yeah, yeah like man. I, I mean, maybe in a different life, I was a really good basketball player because I'm awful. Um, but – you know, just I really wanted to share it with everybody. And, um, you know, her, Katie's sister and mother had talked her down earlier in the day because she really thought that it was going to happen uh, or that it would be a good night that it could happen. Um, but I remember looking back at her in the tunnel. We had to do some awards for, I think, Cameron and Hannah earlier on. And I was looking back at her. I could tell, like, she she wasn't, she wasn't looking too thrilled about everything. And uh, so, luckily, Linda, her mom, and Lydia, her sister, who I coached, uh, in year, years previous, talked her down and got her to believe it wasn't going to happen. But, but as soon as I asked her that second question about her family, man, <laughs> it, it was it was great. I mean, I'll never forget it. Um, I know. Hopefully, she won't ever forget it. I don't think she ever will. So, you know, you know, God willing, come November, things will be you know okay, and we can we can have this thing. We can do this thing. It's, it's going to be an exciting time. But just remember, she's way out of her league. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I mean, it was, it, it couldn't have gone more perfect. It and was it was a nationally televised ESPNU game. I remember I was not calling that game. I was sitting courtside during halftime. The ESPNU broadcaster came over. He wanted your name. He wanted Katie's name. I don't know if they ended up talking about it on national television, but it was just such a great idea doing a trivia game. And yeah. so she, she had no idea until no. the second question. A couple of days before, I was like, all right, I got the questions. This is what we're going to do. She's like, okay, okay, tell me what I'm supposed to say. You know, like I'm sitting there back on my mind. I was like, you ain't got a clue. Um, and actually, 104.5 The Zone, uh, the, the sports uh, radio station out in Nashville, somebody um, tweeted at them or something. So they actually talked about it on um, wow. the first, you know, they have the different series of radio shows they do throughout the day. And they talked about that morning and they tweeted that out and I tweeted back at them and they tweeted back at us. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, man, she's a celebrity. You know what I mean? When you're around me, what can I say? You know, so. <laughs> but uh, she, it's, it was, um, it turned out perfect. Um, man, it was, it was a great night. It was, it was a lot of fun to have my teams there. Uh, I wanted them to be there. Originally I wanted them out there on the court, but I was like, okay, that's going to be, might be a little overkill. That's going to give it away. How am I going to how am I going to camouflage that being them being out there? And so it, it worked out. It worked out really well. So that that's fantastic. And again, maybe co-performance of the year. Maybe that's something that we think about for next year's Golden Wings Awards. Yeah, Coach, we're really nearing the end right now. So how we like to finish these Wings Up Weekly is get a chance for you to address the Golden Eagle fans out there. Kind of give them your message about the teams and and your message going forward throughout these kind of summer months and, and throughout the, these times of uncertainty. So your message to Golden Eagle fans. Uh, just, I mean, well, first and foremost, we can't thank you enough for supporting our, our teams and our athletic department. I mean, Kubel is just an amazing place. We, we love each and every one of you. We want you to stay safe. And um, 
we hope that when things come back to normal, you come out and see us. Um, just enjoy this downtime with your families and whatever it is you like to do on the side. Um, but we miss you and we look forward to seeing you soon. And um, for my teams, I mean, I'll, I'll miss them, love them dearly. Uh, can't wait to see them and just, you know, get ready, you know, because uh, three months is going to go by pretty quick. I mean, two months has already flown by since all this happened. So I'm, I'm excited to, to see what happens here in the next, next few months. Absolutely. Well said. Again, we'll remind everybody about the Pepsi Bobby Nichols Golden Eagle Scramble presented by Michelob Ultra. It's June 12th to 14th. Registration is still open. There are some spots available. You can visit ttsports.com. You can call the Tennessee Tech Athletics Ticket Office. That number is 931-372-3940. Again, 931-372-3940. June 12th to 14th, so it's coming up quickly. Coach, this has been a lot of fun. Learned a lot. Loved hearing about your stories, experiences as a Tennessee Tech offer, and, of course, as the head coach now. So thank you for joining us, Coach. Yeah, thanks, Dylan. I appreciate it. Love you guys. Thank you for everything. Absolutely. We'll get a wings up as we close it out here on Wings yeah. Weekly.